Why hello there, and welcome to my laboratory. I've been studying various GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, to prepare for a top secret project. The very sound of it feels unnatural for some reason, and yet it's really not much different from what humans have used to transform this wild banana into this supposedly regular banana. Different organisms have different alleles expressed, which are responsible for various phenotypes or physical characteristics. Artificial selection is when humans select variants with preferred alleles and breed them together. For example, humans have modified just one species into cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and more. Genetic engineering is similar because, like artificial selection, it allows humans to generate variants of organisms with preferred traits. However, it also lets scientists transfer genes between distantly related organisms that could not normally breed together. GMOs can have their genes changed, new ones inserted, or unwanted genes deleted. Let's take a look at a real GMO, corn or maize as it's also known. Every year, over $1 billion of damage is done to crops by the European cornworm and other insects. Researchers noticed that a bacteria called Bt creates various proteins that specifically kill insect pests, so they transfer the genes responsible for those proteins into corn. But how do you take a gene from one organism and put it into another one? First, scientists isolate the gene they wish to transfer, called a transgene, then surround it with extra DNA to help insert it into the target genome. Isolating the transgene can be difficult, so many times it is synthesized from scratch instead. Adding DNA instructions to it makes it into a vector, which means the transgene has everything it needs to integrate in a new organism. Many times a selectable marker or reporter gene is included, which causes an obvious change in an organism's phenotype to signal that the transfer worked. In mice, this is often a gene that makes them glow green under fluorescent light. And in bacteria, it's usually antibiotic resistance. At this point, a vector is still just a sequence of DNA. The next step is to put it into the target organism. There's many techniques available, but in animals, microinjection is often used to insert the DNA directly into the nucleus with a tiny needle. In plants, a gene gun is the preferred method. You wrap up the vector into a plasmid which is just a circle of DNA, then attach it to a heavy metal particle. The gene gun fires the particle with its plasmid into the nucleus. These methods are obviously quite imprecise. But recently, a new technology called CRISPR is promising to make things way easier. CRISPR is the immune system of some of the simplest single-celled organisms. When a virus attacks a cell, a protein called Cas9 documents its DNA and stores it in its own genome. If the cell survives, it will give the Cas9 protein a copy of the virus translated into guide RNA, and if the virus attacks again, Cas9 will recognize and cut its DNA, stopping it from working. So, to recap, you can give Cas9 any template gene converted to RNA, and when it finds it, it will chop it in half. Wow, this is fun. Oh, sorry. Normally, cells immediately fix any DNA damage using either two processes. They can try to patch up the broken DNA as best as possible, or if there is a copy of the gene somewhere, the cells use the other gene as a template for repairing the broken gene. By providing the cell with a modified copy of the gene, the cell will repair the broken DNA, not knowing that it's been tricked into changing it as well. Wow, so how do you use CRISPR? Well, you need to create a plasmid with three things. The gene responsible for creating the Cas9 protein, instructions to make a guide RNA version of the original gene you wish to change, and of course, the modified copy of that gene plus any other genes you want to insert. Then we can use our trusty gene gun to get that plasmid into the nucleus and it'll get right to work replacing all copies of the old gene with the new one. There's also something else you can do with CRISPR. Create a gene drive, which can change the genes of a whole population, like making mosquitoes immune to malaria. If you release a mosquito that's resistant to malaria into the wild, all of its offspring will have one copy of the new gene, but it will quickly get diluted. But if you engineer a mosquito to transfer genes that code for Cas9 and gRNA to its offspring, CRISPR will continue working in each generation, ensuring all offspring are modified forever. Kinda scary. Genetic engineering is already a big part of our lives, and it's important to understand how it works so we can be prepared for the incredible ways it will affect us in the future. Now, I've got to get to work on that top secret project.